Hello, welcome back to All for United WFC. We have a sign in. Jade Riviere is over the line and signed, sealed, and delivered um, from Canada. So I thought someone, an expert on her, uh, if you will, uh, joining me this this evening or this afternoon, whenever this goes out. Laura, thank you for uh, for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, to talk about Jade in particular. Um, I'll just dive straight into it then in terms of what's your thoughts on this transfer as a whole then? Because it's been going on for quite a while and there was rumours at the back end of December about this and it's been pretty much agreed. I think a lot of United fans have known for a while now, but what do you think on this transfer? Just yeah, it's, it's sort of football's worst kept secret at this point, right? Um, I think it's a really good move for Jade. She's just coming out of her collegiate career. This is her first time going pro. For her personally to sign at a top club at a top league, I think that's really beneficial for her. And I think what Manchester United is gaining is a player who's incredibly versatile on the ball um, with really good tactical thinking and someone who's good at progressing the ball um, forward as well at the pitch. It's interesting you say that. We're certainly going to dive into that in a moment because obviously as United fans know our fullbacks at the moment, our two current fullbacks, Honor and um, and Hannah Blundell are both very attacking fullbacks as well. And obviously Maya, who's currently playing centre half, is uh, a very attacking fullback as well. But for people who don't know much about Jade, what what's her kind of brief history then? Because she's still relatively young. She's 22 in a couple of days time what's yeah. kind of her history because she's played a lot of games for Canada but if you looked at her Wikipedia not too many games in in a senior sense so what's her kind of football history so far yeah for sure so she started progressing up through the Canadian youth ranks um, and she was noticed I think just at the age of 16 by the national team manager at the time so she made her first appearance for Canada or the senior national team anyway in 2017 and a game against the US. Um, she's played 36 games for Canada's national team. She has two um, tournaments under her belt as well. She played in the 2019 World Cup. Um, I think she played about 104 minutes there, even though she was only almost 18, I think at the time. So quite young for her. And then obviously she was part of Canada's gold medal winning team back in 2021 at Tokyo. So she may only have 36 appearances under her belt with the senior team, but she has international experience. She has experience playing top teams and top tournaments. And um, yeah, she's someone that has, I think it's one goal and five assists um, as a defender in only those 36 caps. So she's someone who can progress the play as well. I was going to, uh, that's led me on to a question I didn't actually have written down. You, you mentioned that she came into the Canada set really young, by the sounds yeah. like kind of 16. Yeah. Or, I think that just, for me, I, again, you can elaborate on this, that her kind of, her attitude and her mental um, kind of abilities alongside her physical abilities must have been good at that age to be put into, you know, because Canada's one of, obviously one of the best teams around when you're looking at it around the world in, in the women's game. So when you're looking at it like that, she, do you, does she have that kind of, that mental uh, stature as well of not just her physical abilities, which you know we'll get onto in a second, but to be noticed at that young age, has she yeah. got that side of the game to her as well? Yeah, I think when you watch Jade play, you really see a player who has an eye for seeing where the play is going to go. Somebody who's able to make smart decisions and you've really just seen it grow from her. I mean, it was very noticeable at that young age when she first started appearing for Canada, you knew this was going to be a special player. And so she really does have an ability to view the play, understand what to do. She's not afraid to, you know, push the ball up. And if she makes a mistake, she'll get the ball back. She's not afraid to play it back. You know, if she thinks that's what the best move is, she very much has a good tactical sense of the game. And so, yeah, I think that's been present from day one. And I think when you look at her in interviews or, you know, you even just see her on the sideline, she's very much a team player. She's somebody who I would say is very modest, you know, and is very befitting. I would think of a, you know, almost 22 year old. She's someone who's very kind, very generous, um, and really works with her team as well, because she's a player that, has mostly been used as a substitute, I would say, um, and is really kind of starting to to transition into being one of Canada's starting fullbacks with, you know, some of the players getting older. And so you see that she has that relationship with the people she's almost replacing, and that's really special. And I think it speaks to her mentality and her maturity, um, not only on the pitch, but just on the sidelines as well. No, that's a great thing. Great thing to have, and I think there's a lot of. Um, if you speak to, to to footballers on on the men's or the women's game, a lot of them say a lot of people have the ability. It's the it's the mental um, side of the game that gets the great players um, to the top. So, yeah. I want to come back to her personality in a little bit, but, but yeah. again, for people who maybe haven't seen much of her, I, I think everyone knows that she's a fullback. But you mentioned her versatility at the start. 
Has yeah. she played along yeah, on the left hand side as well as the right? Has she played, you know, in the in the centre two play uh, positions as well? How has she kind of fitted in around the back line? I've I've mainly seen her as a on the right side as a fullback. Um, she has played on the left. She's able to use both her feet very well. I think mainly though, in terms of the Canadian setup, you have a very talented fullback in Ashley Lawrence who usually operates on the left. Um, well, she can operate either side, but normally for Canada, she kind of operates on the left, and then Jade Riviere would come in as a substitute for a right footed. Um, fullback so she would kind of slot in on the right there um that's normally what she does and that's what i would say for canada didn't realize i was still muted there it's funny (laughs) you mentioned lawrence that was a player we did a show i can't remember when it was now must have been mid-december and people were kind of doing our our transfer wish list and lawrence name came (laughs) up quite a few times um so i don't want people to think that we're getting a i don't know how to describe it like a a lesser player no uh, not at that. all no not at all not um, a lesser player so yeah I, yeah <laughs> i don't thought, thought about that because i remember i just remember back to that show and so many people were talking about um talk about lawrence back then but yeah certainly a, a quality player in her own right um the other kind of thing that you mentioned now obviously we were talking about her mental stature i just wanted to get your thoughts on her kind of personality around football and kind of bit off the pitch as well because if you follow, obviously, United women's side, you know, <laughs> you know what the fans are like. Obviously, we know what we're like as fans. She's going to get a reception like that. She's not going to get anywhere else, and particularly in the WSL. Right. What Do you think she's ready for that kind of, not pressure, I say, but we have seen a couple of players come over um, from, from other leagues or younger players, and they've kind of found it a little bit strange. Hang on a minute. Who are these people shouting for me? And, you know, so many people wanting to meet after games and, you know, she's going to get more social media followers than she's, you know, she's ever had <laughs> in her life just by signing for Manchester United. Do you think she's ready for that step as well and just her personality in and around um, football as well? Yeah, I think so. She strikes me very much as somebody who really wants to engage with the sport itself um, and somebody who really wants to engage herself in the community for whichever team she's playing. I mean, you saw that with her collegiate team, University of Michigan. She loved being a Wolverine. That was something that she really... You know, she always talks about with it's just a special spot in her heart. And so she really does like, I think, engaging with the community and being involved with the community. And so I think going to a team for her first professional contract that has that environment will only help her as well. And I think, you know, when we look at it, she started playing for Canada in 2017. And then so she kind of had, you know, a tournament, the World Women's World Cup, where there were fans. But then 2020 hit and everything, you know, she played the Olympics with with no fans, nothing. Right. And so I think it's almost a relief for a lot of these players to be able to have fans again and to be able to engage in that community. So I think she'll be looking forward to it and really looking forward to having a kind of a central home for her, for her career. It will be interesting to see, because as, as I mentioned, I said, we've had a couple of players that have, it was, it's just funny to see some of the players looks like, hang on a minute, they're, they're chanting for, they got songs and we've got flags for them and all those <laughs> kind of things. I'm like, what's going on here? Um, so no, I'll just be intrigued. I'm sure, as like she said there, you know, she's been, been with the World Cup, with the gold medalist at the Olympics, all these kinds of things. I think if she can cope with that on, on that <laughs> big of a stage, fans or not, I think she'll be uh, settling in quite nicely. Um, something I glanced over at the start, actually, I forgot to ask you, you talked yeah. about her, her kind of her brief history at, at the start. What, so what, how, what progressed her into, because if you look at her senior career, obviously she has only played a couple of games. Um, we'll talk about her injury in a second, but how yeah. did that kind of come about then? Because she's with the, obviously I know the system over there is a lot different to over here. We've got <laughs> our, our youth academies that play against each other in a, in a, I would say competitively, but it's not really a competitively. But we've got our, our youth academy set up. I know it's a bit different um, over yeah, there. How did that sure. kind of materialize for us? So, I mean, we don't really have, like you said, we don't have those sorts of academies here in Canada. What we really essentially have is you can play youth soccer for whichever, sorry, youth football for whichever club you want to play for. And then if you get noticed, you know, if you start playing for provincial teams and you get noticed by a national team manager, then you're normally called up. And so she started, I believe it was with, the U 17. I'd have to check that. I think she started playing for the U 17 Canadian team. Um, and just impressed from the get go. You could tell that she was a player even then that had, um, just a brilliant strategic mind, a player that really had the ability to score. Like she can score. I mean, if you see her kick with her right foot, she, she scored a beauty, her one goal for Canada. It was during the 2020 Olympic qualifying tournament. And she scored an absolute beauty of a goal. So I would recommend that your fans go and watch that because the clip's on YouTube. And she's just, she made a player like Christine Sinclair kind of look at her and go, whoa, you did that. (laughs) Um, So, you know, she's always kind of impressed going through the youth system. And then, you know, she just got noticed 
because of that, because she's good at what she does. And you can't say it any more, you know, any better than that. She's just good at what she does. And then she got recognized, started kind of, you know, again, she got capped. I think it was November 2017 at the senior level. And then, you know, started to play little bits, little bits and did enough to make the World Cup in 2019. So whatever she does, it's impressing people. And I think that's what's really impressive about her is that in a short amount of time, she shows that she's integral, not only to the pitch side of things, but to the team. I think that's the key for me, isn't it? The fact that she was selected a couple of years afterwards from 17 to 19 made that big impression. The fact, because it's one thing um, playing in front, I'm not discounting friendlies, but one thing being involved in lesser friendlies, I should, I should say. But then when you're picked for a major tournament, yeah. you've clearly made an impression to, to get into the squad. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think, um, and I hate saying this, but when you look at, you know, CONCACAF as a region, typically qualifications, you know, the final comes down to Canada and the United States, right? That's typically how it goes. So I don't want to discredit any other team, but typically you, you go in and if you bet on that, you'd be pretty safe. So for her to, you know, she got a lot of minutes actually in that 2020 qualifying tournament. She had her one goal then. She had two assists in that tournament as well. Um, so that was a really good kind of tournament for her. And then, yeah, she's just fantastic. She really, really is somebody who's good at playing up good at sitting back. And once she creates partnerships, she's really, really good at being able to move along the wing. That's something that we see um, with Janine Becky. We were able to see it a little bit before mm -hmm. Jade's injury, but Janine Becky operates a lot of the time. I mean, Janine plays everywhere, <laughs> but Janine operates, you know, kind of right wing and she'd be able to overlap with Jade. They'd be able to go back and forth. And so once she creates those partnerships, she'll be able to move up and down the pitch. No problem. Yeah, you mentioned the qualifying stage. That's very similar over here. When England are beating teams, you know, kind of 15, 20 nil every week. Yeah. I'm like, it just isn't. It's, it's, I feel so bad when I'm watching them. Cause I'm like, this just isn't fair on the other team here. It is really not indicative of much, right? It's really not indicative of a lot, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, I think that's what really makes the difference to me is to see somebody play in those kind of maybe easier games, but then make enough of an impression to make bigger squads uh, or bigger tournaments is is really something special. No, 100%. You, you, you mentioned her injury there. Um, mm -hmm. I believe, um, um, if I'm not mistaken, it's a problem with her hip, I think. Have, have I read that right? Or is it? Yeah, so she was the first we sort of saw of it was the CONCACAF um, Women Championship final in, I can't remember if that was end of July, beginning of August. But, you know, over the summer there, she was injured in the final against the US. She came off, I think she played about 60 minutes. Um, and then, yeah, we haven't seen her since for Canada. She, I think she kind of tried to rehab it a little bit. She tried to play a game or two for Michigan, and it just didn't didn't work out. And so she's been rehab now. She's back on the ball. She's training with the ball again. She's running. She's, you know, she's off crutches. She's making all the good progress that you'd want her to make. Um, so I would definitely expect her to see or expect to see her on the pitch soon. I know when I do press conferences with Bev Priestman, who's the manager for the Canadian Women's National Team, she said she fully expects to have her. I mean, this was in November, but she fully expected to have Jade back for February international window. So I don't know if that's limited minutes yeah. or if that's, you know, would see her full 90, full 90, full 90. Um, but it, it's encouraging. I think that, you know, she's on the path to recovery and I would definitely think we'll be seeing her play within the next month. Yeah, because that was one of the things I was going to ask you in terms of what her return date might be. Because obviously, I don't think it's a, a massive thing at the moment with the the kind of fullbacks that we've got, our starting fullbacks anyway. Um, but do, do you think she's going to, there's a slight worry or a slight risk on United's part that she might not be the same player um, as prior to her injury? Obviously, she's still young in her career and things like that, but I don't know how bad the injury is. But she, if she was out for half a year or well, four or five months or so, yeah, um, there's a, a worry that, that either that could be a reoccurring injury that she might get it, you know, a year or so down the line, or do you think that's a little bit of a risk or do you think that you um, know, it's, it's not that big of a, a deal in this case? I mean, I think it's always a risk for any player, right? When you sign any player that has, is just coming off of injury, but that's also the name of the game, right? Anybody could be injured in your next game for your team. So I think she's somebody who's very driven. I don't see any problem with her mentality in terms of coming back and getting back to her full fitness. I really do see her as somebody who is resilient and somebody who can do that. So I would not, I don't think there's a necessarily a risk in terms of her ability to come back from it. I mean, obviously things happen. I don't know she could get the wrong, you know, wrong end of a tackle in her first game back and that doesn't go well, but um, you know, kind of speculation aside, I would presume from what I know of her mentality and her, you know, dedication to training, I, I don't think it would be a risk. 
And to your point, she's young enough that, you know, it's not like she's 37 and it's a, <laughs> oh, is it worth it? Is it not? You know, she's, she's 22. She, and in her statement, you know, when she announced she was injured, she did the statement. She released it with the University of Michigan Wolverines. And she said, I'm still hoping for a professional career. I'm still hoping to be able to do this because she is a top talent. And I think, you know, if we hadn't seen her decide to make the move to England and she'd registered for the NWSL draft, I think we would have seen her go top five or six. You know, she is a talent and you can't deny that. And so I think somebody of her talent and her, just her experience at such a young age, that is somebody you take a risk on. I think certainly for on, on that case, because it, there was a lot of interest from Europe, obviously with, uh, with Jade, it wasn't just United in the mix. So that, that's why I'm oh, glad absolutely. that we've got this one, uh, got this one over the line because it's another player <laughs> as we strive for champions league. And as we go for yeah. that kind of next level as a, as a women's club, anyway, um, that's the kind of sign and beating off other um, champions league established clubs is a, is a big, big thing for me personally. Um, yeah, and I think if I had to guess, actually, Connor, I would say that she would want to be a part of a team where she can make a difference. So, I mean, obviously, you want to go to clubs that are, you know, always in the UWCL, like when you look at like Chelsea or Olympic Lyonnais or PSG. But to me, it actually says a lot that she wants to go somewhere that's making that push. And I think she wants to be a part of a team's success. And so I think that's actually really interesting that you mentioned kind of where Man United is sitting right now in the standings. You know, you're pushing for a UWCL spot. And I think she's somebody who really wants to help a team get there, not just ride a team and then join midway through, if that makes sense. I think she really wants to be part of the success, make an impact and, and do her job. No, I think we are seeing that with a few players. Obviously, we've just got our new kind of, well, I say new, it was announced a while ago. Obviously, Polly Bancroft came in dealing with these kinds of things now as well. It's obviously Mark Skinner being mm -hmm. the coach as well. So there's certainly some some more things going on and hopefully a couple of signings um, this window as well. Um, just very brief. Well, I say briefly. You can describe it however long you want. But her, yeah. if you could sum up her kind of qualities and attacking wise and defensive, you mentioned she's already got a couple of goals, and, well, a few assists in there as well from from defense as well. What would you kind of? How would you summarize her as a as a fullback? Is she a, a very good one on one defending fullback? Is she very good going forward? Like we've got obviously with honors, very good going forward and yeah. defensively. What kind of fullback would you describe her as? I would say she's very good on the ball. She's not afraid of a tackle. You know, she'll she'll go in. She had her hand, or I think her wrist stepped on and um, by a player at the Arnold Clark Cup last year because she was just not afraid to get on in there. Um, so you have someone who has no fear, and I think that's really invaluable. Um, she has great pace and technical skills, fantastic great foot, like I said, and I think she's just really somebody who you can count on to get back and make a defensive tackle, who can take players on 1v1 but who also has a really good passing ability as well and, and partnership when she builds those up. And yeah, she progresses forward up the pitch. You know, it's not unusual to see her on the other half and, you know, making plays and booting the ball in. So, I mean, if you look to, I think she, she assisted Sinclair once and her goal, you know, she was in the other team's penalty box. She got the ball all the way up there and then just booted it to Sinclair. So she's not afraid to make moves. And I think that's, you just have a fearless player, a fearless young tenacious player who has great skill and a great mind i think you mentioned um uh, i think earlier on and just that as well but she can form partnerships on the pitch i think we're starting to do that now with some of the players we're linked with a couple of french players in and now we're getting some norwegian links in the squad obviously adriana right. leon came to us in the summer as well another player that yeah. can uh, that she can uh, well leon's not had that much starting time i've got to be honest on minutes at all which is a bit frustrating for me personally but that's a whole other topic on this <laughs> on its own um but you know there's we're starting to form links outside of our kind of english core what you'd yeah. argue with the spine of the team with Herbs, um, Zalem, Tooney and, and Russo. We're now starting to get some other links in and around it. So if she can form a good link um, with a player like Leon or whoever else. Um, I mean, just from the out, I don't know how much you've watched of United, but do you, is there anyone that you look at in the United squad that you think she'd work well with in, in our Ooh. side at the moment? I mean, I think she would... I think she just has the ability to work well with anybody. And I'm not saying that as a cop out. I'm saying that as she really truly does have the ability to just say you're on my team and this is how, you know, we're going, you know, this, <laughs> this is what we do. So um, I think if there is a player, particularly, you know, on that right wing who will be able to, who has the ability to kind of switch back and forth, um, you know, like a Janine Becky type person, somebody who can really move up and down the pitch, work well together, kind of build off of each other. I think she's, you know, she would work really well with a person like that. Um, 
but she's a good enough player. She'll work with anybody and she'll have that partnership. And I think a lot of that takes time too, right. You know, in terms of yeah, trying yeah. to gel with the squad, like, and I think she's somebody too, when she come, when she really fully rehabs from her injury, I think she'll be pushing for a starting spot. And especially when you look at, is it owner's contract? That's not yes. <laughs> or that's out at the end of the season. So I think she'll be pushing for a starting spot. And I think, you know, if you're pushing for a starting spot, you will find links and you will realize where you can make your impact and what you can do differently. And like I said, she's a player that has that mind where she could, she could easily figure that out. Oh, you've, uh, you, you've stolen my next question there, but uh, <laughs> yeah, because that, that, that was going to be my question actually, because obviously she's very, obviously very highly rated from Canada. A couple of other people mm-hmm. I know uh, from Canada have spoke very highly of her. Um, mm-hmm. That was going to be one of my questions. Do you, do you think she's going to come in and, and not settle as such because she's coming back from an injury? So this season might be a little bit out of the question, especially with the form of honour. Blondell's done yeah. very well on, on the other side. And obviously we've got Leticia who could play there as well. Going mm-hmm. into next season, however, do you think that she would be happy? Well, not happy as so such. No one's happy being <laughs> on the bench and so on. But pushing for that starting spot. Do you think she's got to come in and make that her own, really? Um, yeah, I, I think she rather than be I a rotation fullback like some fans are expecting it to be. Yeah, no, I think she can come in and easily make it a starting spot. And so I think actually when she's coming into the team is really beneficial for her and for your team as well, because obviously you have two fullbacks, like you said, who are in great form right now, like they're playing fantastically. Um, and so you have somebody coming in like Jade a little bit off of injury. So maybe she does manage minutes at first, you know, but can train with the team, get to know the team. And then, you know, as she gets maybe more minutes, especially as you, you know, you tie in different games, maybe she plays like 20 minutes here, 30 minutes here against different opposition, right? Just kind of test her out. And then I think, um, especially if she has a good campaign at the World Cup this summer, I would think she could very easily take starting spot. And that kind of leads me on, on to one of my final questions. And obviously looking yeah. at it fr- from an outsider's point of view, we've debated this a number of times <laughs> on this channel about, about Honor, whether she's staying or going and things like that. Do you think this kind of signing signifies to you from an outsider looking in that this maybe is an Honor replacement? Or do you think that this is more we're looking at defensive cover? Because at the moment we've only got three maybe four fullbacks if you uh, throw uh, Tara Sotier in there. But do you think that she's coming in as an honour replacement or do you think she's coming in as cover if you had to put a, put a marker yeah, out no, there? I mean, um, my gut is telling me it's a replacement move because she's, like I said, a young player. You can get her for, a, you know, getting her rated to college, you can get her for a long time. You know, it's not like she has allegiances. and It's not like she's played for Man City for 10 years and, you know, you're bringing her here and she's kind of like, okay, what am I doing? You know, she's somebody that's coming right out she has the ability. I think a lot of it does depend to be honest on terms of how the last few months of this season go, I would presume it's going to be a replacement unless something happens. So that's my gut feeling is she's coming in and she's going to be your starting fullback next, next season. Yeah, I think that's where I'm kind of swaying to at the moment because I just think I just think she's too good. I mean, we might see Honor stay and and mm-hmm. Honor gets shoved. I say shoved. Honor gets put onto the left hand side and and Jade will start on the right. Who knows? That that would be ideal. Um, mm-hmm. uh, no disrespect to, to Blundell, but I think when you're looking at these two players, I think you're you're going up another level, another level. Then. Um, and, so. I, and I think it's interesting too, Connor, how you mentioned earlier that, you know, a lot of European clubs were interested in her, you know, it wasn't just Man United. And I think that says something to me as well, in terms of if you're looking for replacement or cover, I don't think she would have signed somewhere where she wouldn't be getting a lot of playing time. Right. Because if she had a lot of offers and somebody of her ability, she knows what she's worth. So, you know, I think she would be coming in knowing she'll at some point after injury, be getting a good chunk of playing time. So yeah, that's where kind of wa- where my gut goes, you know, and I mean, obviously, she's a fantastic player. You really don't want to have to go up against her. Um, you know, it's like if Chelsea or Man City had signed her, that that would be unfortunate, right? <laughs> that would be unfortunate from a Man United perspective. Um, so I think for her, really, it's she wants to go somewhere where it's a good club. She can have ambitions for the UWCL. She can channel challenge for a title. You know, there are those options available. They're all, you know, you're always top of the table or, you know, in that range. It's not like you're fighting relegation or anything. And I think she's, wants to go somewhere where she can she can make an impact and play minutes and so i think that would have been part of the the deliberation or when she was talking with her agent i'm sure that would have been part of the consideration right because she did have a lot of interest from a lot of different european clubs in a lot of different leagues so 
There's de- yeah, hundred percent. There's definitely been a conversation um, had there somewhere because uh, you, if you if you listen to um, I'm going a little bit off piece here, but just on the Canada aspect, if you listen to some of the rumblings around Adriana Leon right now, um, you know whether she was promised things that she's now not getting um, in terms of minutes and things like because she's hardly featured. Well, she didn't really feature at all um, at the back end. Well, since we've signed her, really, so which is a shame yeah, because no. she's obviously performing well for Canada. She's she's played well for us when she's played um, as well, but she just doesn't seem to be the yeah, favourable option at the moment. Yeah, I think the Adriana Leon um, signing is a little bit confusing to a lot of fans. Not that you signed her, um, but that she's not being played. And, I, you know, I think for a lot of Canadian fans, when you watch her for Canada, I'd say she's one of our most informed players right now. I mean, she's scoring bangers left right and center she's assisting she's you know really making an impact on the pitch and and I think in a way that we haven't seen her done before because Leon is someone who and not to you know transition from Riviera but Leon is a player who you know played in the you know kind of was dropped for the 2016 Olympics but was in the 2015 World Cup you know like kind of has had her own ups and downs internationally and so for her, it's crucial to get minutes and to play and so the fact that she's not getting those minutes even though she's in great form for country is is a bit interesting. So I think a lot of Canadian fans are watching this signing with Riviere, hoping that she does get those minutes and that it's not sort of a, a, a case of the same. Fingers crossed. Cause uh, we don't want uh, some too unhappy Canadians in our, uh, <laughs> in our ranks. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> that's not going to be a good fight to, to entertain. Um, no, we'll, 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 look, we'll look to wrap it up there. And you've covered so much in 26 minutes or so that, that we've been recording there. So I'm sure I've certainly learned something about her anyway. And I'm sure people watching, um, I hope you have uh, learned something about her as well. I am excited for Jade. I'm excited to see what she can bring to your team. I'm hoping you all are excited. Um, I think she's a player with a lot of grit and a lot of tenacity. And I'm really excited to see her go pro. This has been something that a lot of Canadian fans have been waiting for for a long, long time, you know, it's, it's hard because a lot of Canadians play obviously in the American system, right? You know, you know a lot yeah. of the, the bigger named Canadians play there. So, you know, you're kind of like, can you skip your last couple of years and just go pro? And so for her to finally go pro is, is a really big step, I think for, for Jade and for Canada. And I'm just, I'm so excited to see the waves that she'll make in the WSL. No, hundred percent. We're all as uh, as excited as you. We'll have to get you back on, and w- once she's played a few games, hopefully it'll be this season. But uh, once she's played a few yeah, games, yeah, hopefully. Get you back on and, uh, um, as for us, I, I don't know when we're going to be back because I don't know when this is going out. <laughs> um, so make sure you're liking the video and subscribing. Uh, <laughs>